Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Jackson Kelmar claims his sound system was damaged after his angry neighbor showed up uninvited to his backyard party. John Minson says he tripped over the speaker cord trying to stop his neighbor's noisy tunes. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good day, Your Honor. This is the case of Kelmar versus Minson. Mr. Kelmar, you are suing Mr. Minson for $700. You say he caused damage to your speakers. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Minson, you say it wasn't your fault. Correct, Your Honor. All right. Let's start with the plaintiff. What happened? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I recently moved into a new house in the neighborhood next door to Mr. Minson. Uh, I was having a housewarming party. I had some guests over. Um, we had some speakers set up, and Mr. Minson came, trespassed onto my property uh, to tell me to stop making noise. Uh, and then on his way out, he tripped and uh, unplugged my speaker and um, plugged it back into the wrong spot. And he unplugged it on purpose? He no. tripped over it, Your Honor. Oh, he tripped over it? Yes. So he's coming over to tell you that your, your music was too loud? Yes. And tripped over where you had the speaker plugged in? Yes, Your Honor. How did you have the speaker plugged in? Uh, we had the, um, the speaker was plugged in behind the stage. Um, actually, I have a diagram of I'd the... I'd like to see it, please. So you, we're having a party? Yes, ma'am. How many people at this party? Um, maybe 30, 40. So walk me through. So that's your house? Yes, my house is uh, on, on the top there. With, uh, there was the stage in the backyard, and there was our back gates that kind of connect our two properties in that area that he could walk through. And I had my cords and all my speakers set up back there. And if you, if you take out the gate, I was off to the back. There was no one in that area. He came out his gate and came around your gate, but he was right where the cords were plugged in. Correct. Yes, All Your right. Honor. All right, so Mr. Minson, you're next door at your house. Yes. And what, you hear the music? Yes, well, going back a, a couple weeks before he moved in, well, before the incident, he moved in and he started playing music all times a day, from in the morning, late at night, and after about five days, I got really fed up, and I decided to talk to him about it. So I went to his house and explained to him that, you know, I'm retired, but I still work in the mornings, so I need to get some sleep. So he said, we can do a compromise, maybe I can stop at 8 o'clock. And he did for a couple days. Then that next, two weeks later, that weekend at 8.30 at night, he had this big party, and he didn't have the courtesy to tell me or the rest of the neighbors that he was having this party with 50 or 60 people and oh you said 50 to 60 50 people. Or 50, it was, there was a lot of people because that's a very if you look at this the diagram that's a very huge space and it was filled with people and so I, I went I went out the back and he was standing right around that little arrow right there he saw me well, I yeah, came to him loud. and I explained to him you know I thought we had an agreement and I was frustrated but I was I decided to leave and so I, as I turned around to leave I tripped over the cord. So now, the cord was in the grass yes. next to the stage? Yes, it was uh, on the, between the gate, I guess it's, it's wrapped around the gate to the stage. Approach Okay. and come up here and show me. Sure, okay. So I came through here, through here. The cord was going this way to the stage. I said my piece, he said his piece, and then I turned around and left. He didn't mention to me that I should watch my feet. He had nothing like a runner, like a carpet on top of the, on top of the cord or anything. So I wouldn't have known. All right. And so I fell. And, you know, I got up quickly, but when I fell, the music stopped, and I thought it was the right thing to do to plug it back in, and I saw it was just a, it looked like a standard cord. All right, back I in. understand. You can step yes. back to the okay. podium. So, Mr. Kelmar, why were you behind stage when Mr. Minson walked up? I mean, that's way on the back of the party. Yeah, Your Honor, I'm, so I'm a professional musician. This is what I do. And so part of our, our housewarming party, my band was out there playing a show. So you're having a housewarming party? Yes, ma'am. Had you invited everyone in the neighborhood as well? Because that's what you usually do at a housewarming if you're trying to be a good neighbor. And yeah, Your, your Honor, um, I, we're in the back area. He's my only neighbor. And a few, like the week prior to that, we'd had a bad interaction where he came over 
Because of that interaction, I tried to be neighborly. I uh, agreed to stop at 8 p.m. for my practicing when I'm playing music at home. And, um, and so this was 8.30, right? Yes, So why was the music going on then at 8.30? Well, so we were, I mean, that was for our day-to-day, -day, you know, interactions for practicing and, and, you know, generally when I'm doing my drums. But you didn't think it applied for a housewarming party? Correct, Your Honor. Yeah, it was just a, just a party, just a, like, you know, housewarming. I don't do them all, all right. the time. You motioned for him to come or you just allowed him to come onto your property? He just, he came, he trespassed onto my property. He came on without permission. He looked at me. Um, he acknowledged me, Your Honor. Did you see him yes. walk through the gate? As he came on, yes, All Your right, Honor. you saw him. Did you ever say to him, hey, stop, you're trespassing. I'm having a party right now, a private gathering. Please don't come on my property. Um, no, Your Honor, I didn't. Um, we were, it, was, it was just a, it was a fast thing. He just came on really quick. I didn't really have a chance to think. So he you just, knew he was coming onto the property? I, I saw him enter, yes. All right, all right. Coming up. When he decided to try to plug the music back in, did you say, hey man, I got it? Like, cause you're the musician. Mm -hmm. No, Your Honor, it was just very fast. He, came, he walked out, tripped, picked it up, and before I could even say anything, plugged it into the wrong spot. And later. My friend ran a red light and we got pulled over and we got taken into the station because they smelled the marijuana that we had smoked earlier, that I had smoked earlier, Your Honor. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Jackson Kelmar, who blames John Minson for a blown speaker. Did you see him trip? Uh, I did see, I yes. saw it happen, yes. He didn't tell me to do anything. And then when he decided to try to plug the music back in, did you say, hey man, I got it? Like, cause you're the musician. Mm -hmm. No, Your Honor, it was just very fast. He, came, he walked out, tripped, picked it up, and before I could even say anything, plugged it into the wrong spot, over Someone to the side of the box. Someone does a trip and fall, stands back up, grabs a plug to go plug it back into an outlet, and it was so fast, you didn't have time to say, hey, not right there. I'm just trying to figure out how all of that happened while you're looking at him. Well, it was, um, I mean, I think just emotionally played into it, emotions played into it a little bit because we were, you know, it was a party, we were having a good time. I had his, his total attention and he is a professional. So what was the damage yes. that was caused? What happened? You plug it in and what happened? So the speakers were plugged into a transformer, a little box that it's designed, I, and I, I put the evidence up there. Um, the speakers were plugged into a box that's designed to protect them from surges uh, yes. because I am a professional. I make sure I take care of my gear and um, it was plugged into there. And then when he tripped and unplugged it, he had to plug it. He had to actually like the cord was there. He had to move it to the plug. So it is it your testimony that he plugged it into the wrong spot? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And because of that, the transformer blew. Yes, Your Honor. And what else happened? I see the receipt here for the large portable speaker. Yeah, so the speakers, the speakers are what he plugged into the wrong spot. And so as soon as he plugged in those speakers, they fried. All right, the, the issue becomes, you know, you said he was trespassing, right? Now he is on your property. You didn't give him permission to enter your property. And, but the moment you saw him coming into your property, you didn't deny him permission. So at that point, he's not trespassing because you're basically by your actions exhibiting Yes, what are you trying to tell me? However, Mr. Minson wasn't technically invited to the party, but once he entered that gate and you did not say, hey man, let me talk to you outside the gate. Once he's on the premises, it's, it's important that you do at least warn him of known dangers. Yes, Your Honor, but he I didn't give me a chance to. He came in. Well, the chance was as he was walking towards the stage because you knew it was there, he didn't. I also think it's reasonable to assume that this neighbor might come over because you had agreed to not play loud music after eight and then you just took it upon yourself to decide that a housewarming party is exempt from that. I think it is reasonable under the circumstances when someone trips and knocks a cord out, their first instinct is, uh, 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 let me plug it back in and he didn't know where to plug it. Now, Mr. Minson, seeing as though you tripped over a cord, you were embarrassed, but you could have looked up and asked, Mr. Kelmar, where do I plug this in? I understand. And I understand how fast it could have happened. 
But I think in this circumstances, Mr. Minson was definitely not a trespasser. And I also think that it's reasonable to think that any person from your party could have just decided, oh, I want to speak to one of the musicians and walked around back down uh, behind the stage and also tripped over the same cord. I don't find him to be responsible for the blowing out of your speaker. Um, I do think because you did trip over the cord and plug it into the wrong spot, it would have been neighborly to say, hey, I'm sorry, what can I do? I, I didn't mean to trip over the cord. I understand, but I was in shock because I hit the ground so But hard. you're not in shock now. At the same time, he's a professional, and if not me, one of the other 50 or 60 people there would have done the exact same thing. And I'm only opening this up to give you a moment to see if there's a neighborly gesture you want to do. Under the law, I do think that this was a danger that a reasonable person in the circumstance of could have easily tripped over. Mm -hmm. And you have to do a better job when you have cords coming across a walkway yes. that's across a gate into protecting people on your property. So, Mr. Kelmar, in light of this, I do believe it's reasonable that someone from your party or even a neighbor that's coming on and you see he's coming on to talk to you, which I know you probably know was about the noise, would be in danger with that cord coming across. And I do think you had a duty to either say watch your step or make sure there was something there that denoted that there was a known danger, all right? For that reason, I do not think your neighbor owes you $700. Your case is dismissed. Judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. You know, I do feel bad about the loss of your equipment, but like I said before, you're professional and you should have known that that kind of situation would have occurred. Like you came into my house and broke my stuff, man, that's not... Well, you saw me. I mean, you could have just said no. <laughs> Gentlemen, follow me this way, please. Coming up... What was the reason why the police said they pulled you over? I ran a red light accidentally. I was approaching a yellow and thought I could make it because I didn't want her to miss her flight. It was at midnight. This happened at about 10.30. And when they pulled me over, they smelled the marijuana. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Emily Jones claims her friend was driving her to the airport, but they were pulled over by the police, so she missed her flight. Hannah Sparks says the officer smelled her pal's marijuana smoke, so she's not responsible. This is the case of Jones versus Sparks. Ms. Jones, you are suing Ms. Sparks for $530, and she's your former roommate. You say this is for flight change fees. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Sparks, you say this wasn't your fault. You don't owe anything. Yes, Your Honor. Tell me what happened, Ms. Jones. Where did you need a flight to? I needed a flight to Louisiana for my mom's 50th birthday. Tell me where you were the evening in question. We were at a frat party, and... I you guys go to college together? Yes, Your Honor. And then what happens? I was smoking marijuana, and I smoked in her car. And as we were driving to the airport, my friend ran a red light, and we got pulled over, and we got taken into the station because they smelled the marijuana that, we had smoked early, that I had smoked earlier, Your Honor. What was the reason why the police said they pulled you over? I ran a red light accidentally. I was approaching a yellow and thought I could make it because I didn't want her to miss her flight. And when they pulled me over, they smelled the marijuana in the car that she had smoked earlier in the night. So they wanted to take me into the station to test my sobriety to make sure I wasn't driving under the influence. All right, hold on. Had you been drinking that night? No, Your Honor. No drinking? No drinking, Had Your you Honor. been smoking? I had earlier in the night, but not in the car. Ms. Jones, it sounds like there were a lot of bad decisions happening that night. Why do you think your friend owes you $530? Because I missed my flight, I had to pay an extravagant um, late fee for a new flight, and I think she owes me that money. And you say that why? Because she was the one responsible for taking me to the airport, Your Honor. You ain't no kid. Why is Ms. Sparks responsible for getting you to the airport? Because she was the one driving me, Your Honor. So you feel like she 
was wrong by running the red light and that's why you didn't get to the airport on time? Yes, Your Honor. And you think she should pay? Yes, Your Honor. Coming up. Y'all know we all know y'all high. <laughs> it smells ridiculous. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with a dispute between Emily Jones and her ex-friend Hannah Sparks over a missed flight. Miss Sparks, what do you say to that? The reason why we were actually held up is because they needed to take me in to test my sobriety because they smelled the marijuana that she had smoked in my car. So this normal traffic stop escalated because of the marijuana the police smelled. Yes, Your Honor. But you're here to say that it's still her fault because if she didn't run the red light, they wouldn't have pulled you over and they wouldn't have been able to smell the marijuana. That's your point? Yes, Your Honor. So much of this could have been Avoid it with better decision making, or you just don't smoke weed when you're trying to make it to your mother's 50th birthday on the airplane. How you got yourself wrapped around this notion that it's everybody's fault but yours is fascinating to this court. This was all so avoidable. And you know what's so crazy about everybody with this weed, and I don't know if you all agree, but you can smell it so easily, like so quickly. But it's like everybody that's smoking it all the time, they just be walking in places normal, like, and I'm like, y'all know we all know y'all high. <laughs> it smells ridiculous. You become immune to it and you don't understand how pungent it is when you enter a space. You cannot be out driving cars under the influence. And even though you said you smoke earlier, Miss Sparks, we don't know if it still was in your clothes, mm -hmm. in your hair. And now y'all out here running red lights trying to get to the airport, didn't even have good sense enough to leave early and drive slow. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. And I hope you tell your mother what really happened, because I know in the attempt to somehow Get yourself out of being responsible. You probably went there talking about, and Hannah, I can hear you now. Can't you hear, Sean? I would have made it here if Hannah would not have run that red light and it's all Hannah's fault, right? Maybe, yes. Sound yeah. just like you, right? When in actuality, you could have done better. And just know, I know in many states now, marijuana is legal, but driving under the influence of drugs and alcohol is never legal. Do you understand? All right. Judgment for the defendant, court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. I told you this was so pointless. This was so pointless. Was it pointless? You're upset that I wasted your time? Look how much time you just wasted. You, you wasted all of that time you're too. Wasting, you're wasting breath. Please come this way. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.